All right, so this video is uh, talking about uh, the domain and range, as well as answering a couple of uh, questions about exponential functions, and then uh, I'll do another video about logarithmic functions, kind of like the uh, twin of exponential functions. Um, and the important features to notice here about exponential functions is that there are two different kinds. There's exponential growth and exponential decay. So these, number three and four, are two examples of decay, meaning the graph starts out at a really big number, so you see at negative two, like it's off the graph, and then as it gets to negative one, it slopes down, when it gets to zero, it slopes down, and then it starts to taper off and get really flat, because an exponential graph, it grows or shrinks exponentially or really quickly, okay? So in this graph here, important also to notice, it's not really pictured here, but it should be, there are two asymptotes. So I'll go ahead and draw in number three right there. So you'll notice that I put a dashed line because what you see here on an exponential graph, because we don't have the function, I really can't show you, but I guess I'll kind of give you a little background in the sense that when I have an exponential graph, if I continue to uh, uh, going in a certain direction, it's uh, I, would can, I would get closer and closer and closer to this asymptote at 2, but it will never actually touch. Okay, So notice how the graph is going to continue to get lower and lower and lower, but it's never actually going to reach that line. Okay, uh, and, and the way I like to explain it is by if I have 1, okay, and I cut it in half, I have 1 half. What if I cut that in half? 1 fourth. What if I cut that in half? One eighth. What if I cut that in half? One sixteenth. Right? Now I just keep going and going and going. And I would still have one over something. It might be end up being like one million two hundred thousand four hundred, right? But I still have something. There's still a number there. So even though I keep cutting it in half, I'll never get to zero. Sort of the same idea when it comes to asymptotes. I'm going to get really, really close, but I'm never actually going to touch that line. So, uh, on number three here, for example, let's talk about the domain. Okay, so I'll draw Dom. Okay, so for the domain, it's talking about all the possible X numbers this graph will cover. So, uh, again, if I were to draw arrows, because it's continuous going in both directions here. So, if see as the left part of the graph, it's, it's going upwards. It's also going outwards. So it's actually going to start at negative infinity. Again, if we let this graph go on forever, that's where it would be. Comma, again, the right part of the graph, see how it's getting close to the asymptote, but it's never going to touch, but that's okay. It's going to keep going all the way out to positive infinity. So that's the domain for uh, exponential graph. Okay, let's talk about the range, meaning the lowest the graph can go and the highest the graph will go. And, again, the asymptote is actually a great clue. So, again, that kind of, like, floor of the exponential graph is where the asymptote is because it will never actually touch. But what do we write for, like, the lowest part of the range? I mean, we could, so if it's at 2, do we write 2.1 or 2.01 or... 2.0000001 because it's going to get really close, but it's never actually going to touch it because we just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So, but whatever number we write, can't we go smaller? Like if I write all that 2.0000001, couldn't I just write 2.0000001, right? I can make it even smaller if I wanted to. So what we do in this scenario is rather than writing like that, we're just going to say, okay, we know it's going to get close to 2 but never touch. So when I write it, I'm not going to include 2, right? It's going to be non-inclusive. It will get close, but I can't include 2. So this is an example where you wouldn't want to include something in your range. And, of course, uh, that's, that's low as it's going to go. But it, how high is this graph, graph going to go? It's going to go up and up forever, so it's going to go to infinity. And we can't include infinity. So that's a good example of domain and range with exponential functions because an asymptote is involved. And, again, we'll get into more graphs where asymptotes kind of uh, create havoc on things. Okay. And the last thing we're going to go for number three here is the idea of for what x value is f of x equals 5. So we sort of talked about this where f of x, uh, we kind of, as we got into a more advanced math, rather than saying y equals something, we changed it to f of x because we could have multiple functions happening within one problem. And how do we identify which function is which? We actually look at the, uh, 
we look at the letter. So the graph F is doing this, the graph G is doing this, because if they all said Y, we would be really confused. So another name for this is Y equals 5. So at Y equals 5, again, there's the point right there, the graph, it's actually touching negative 1. So at Y equals 5, X equals negative 1. So that's kind of like a loose explanation of what this is about, all the different nuances of exponential functions. I'll do another longer explanation of uh, logarithmic functions, which is almost the same, but there's one key difference, but you'll have to see the video to find out. So there you go. Here's a video about exponential functions.